reboot film It's the same old movie Every frame Just like the one before Reboot film Full of reboot people Waking up to say it's the Oscar-nominated animated classic Beauty and the Beast versus the 2017 Fail as Old as Time on Movie Feuds. When I first heard Emma Watson was going to be taking on the role as Belle, I was actually pretty happy. It, it increased my excitement from zero to one. Then I started to think about the singing portions and realized this may have been a big mistake. Thankfully, Autotune sweeps in and saves the day. Her voice sounds straight up robotic at times and pales in comparison to Paige O'Hara's Belle. Watson has very little presence at all, in fact. She's just kind of there, going from set piece to set piece with a warm smile and a sunny face. Which is a shame, as she's one of the big highlights for me in the terrific Harry Potter franchise. They went straight up CG for the Beast here, which begs the question, why not make him more similar looking to the hand-drawn effort? I was not a fan of his appearance, to put it lightly. I'm being less crass this episode because I understand kids are going to stumble upon this video, and it's not the most family-friendly generally. I'm really trying here, folks. Uh, I'm really trying here, terrible parents who let their kids surf YouTube blindly. The Beast has no edge to him anymore. Robbie Benson was fearsome, funny, and kind. Perhaps the biggest miscast comes from Luke Evans as Gaston. The guy is neither large nor intimidating. Richard White nails it the first time around. For there's no man in town who's as manly. He's perfect. A pure paragon. I did enjoy Olaf. That's about the only edge I'm gonna give this new incarnation. Josh Gad was clearly having fun as another Disney lovable oaf. Which leaves me with the staff around the mansion who have been randomly turned into talking candelabras and clocks. They look pretty terrible. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. In fact, look at the dishes and you'll see. And speaking of dishes, I want to talk about Mrs. Potts for a second. Emma Thompson is a great actress, but no one beats Angela Lansbury. No one. In summary, Gad wasn't a total failure and everyone else was mediocre at best. Guess I could have started there. Tale as old as time. This tale as old as time has been told countless times. Most would say, including myself, that the 1991 version is the peak as it came out during the heyday of the Disney Renaissance and is arguably the best Disney hand-drawn film to date. So when Disney announced a new live-action remake, plenty of people did a heavy sigh and assumed this was nothing more than an easy cash grab. And after seeing this film with my two children, I can confirm this is exactly the case. I have no idea why this film exists outside of printing money. It's almost exactly the same from the music to the dialogue. The big differences between the two are the pacing and the added sequences in the 2017 version. The 91 take runs at a brisk 1 hour and 24 minutes. It doesn't waste any time laying out the plot with a quick narration to start things out. Then it's right into the beautiful opening number, seeing our protagonist feel bad for herself and mock blue collar workers via song. There goes the baker with his tray like always, the same old bread and rolls to sell. Baking bread should be a stepping stone to your final destination, not your full career path, baker man. That guy's the worst. Jokes aside, this song sets the tone for the epicness the audience is about to behold. The overproduced 2017 version feels off on basically all fronts. It's for some reason now over two hours long and decides to pump up the drama. 2017 feels flat and completely void of creativity, instead resting on nostalgia at every turn. I'm not even talking about the movie anymore, I'm talking about this year in general. <laughs> Jesus, how much time do you have? I don't want to keep tearing down the new film like a sheep on a freshly gifted book, but this thing is a mess. 91 is a treasure on all fronts. It has some of the best music in the industry. Every single song is not only perfect, but manages to push the story forward. The film looks amazing over 25 years later. Early Pixar was brought on to do some of the first 3D in a hand-drawn film. It was revolutionary and critically praised. This new beauty may have that 2017 polish, but lacks any substance. There is so much going on, yet so little being said. There's no subtlety anymore. This is lost on Twilight Breaking Dawn director Bill Condon. The music numbers are fine, I guess, for what they are, which to me are essentially kids bop. Just poor reimaginings of much better versions of songs. Chock full of auto-tune and uninspired settings. All right, I've had enough. Let's kill the beast. 
classic sweet and very kind. But this was coarse and this was drab and unrefined. It's not for me, I'll just ignore. As Disney remakes every film it's done before. For what it's worth, my eight-year-old daughter does prefer this new version. And I didn't even swear at her or call her names. Which is more than I can say for some of the YouTube comments I will inevitably get. I mean, I did legally disown her, but I think that's fair. That's within my right. I'm sure you have a thought or two, so let's hear it. Comment, vote for your winner, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. Oh, and also wait and see a few years more as Disney remakes every film it's done be. Holding that note, which is probably off key. Four and scene.